Hey, good people. This is the Confessions of a Nail Tech podcast. I'm your host, Rashida H. Muhammad, nail tech affectionately known as Ra. I have so much to share with you this evening. Welcome. Let's get started. Out with the old and in with the new year. Hey, good people. Nails by Ra here and happy new year. I know I abandoned you all in November, but life got real for me, as I'm sure life got real for you too. I recently moved into a new space, I no longer have a roommate, and I feel like that was necessary for my growth, you know? Sometimes it is difficult to create in a space with someone else in your space, if that makes sense. Yeah? Okay. Also, I am in the last year of my 20s, and I felt like being 30... And being 30 with a roommate just wasn't the move, especially in in Georgia, you know, where I am. So that was really all I needed in order for me to make the decision last minute. I'm in a space now where I am allowed to let my creativity flow without being at the mercy of someone else's schedule. I wanted these last couple of months in my 20s to be extremely selfish. I mean, extremely selfish. Can I? No. Let me? No. That's my answer moving forward. No. Without explanation. Because I feel like I left a lot of my early 20s learning myself and setting those, learning how to set boundaries. I didn't know how to say no without giving an explanation. No, but no, because now it's just no. So as we approached the end of 2020, I had a reality check that the life I thought I wanted or the life I thought I, the life I thought I wanted was just not the life I needed at all. I'm going to get a little personal here and it is completely unrelated to nails, but I feel that we all can relate and have that moment as people and as people dealing with relationships. So I'm going to take you down memory lane. I was able to go home during my Christmas break, um, yeah, I was home from about the twenty, the twentieth until the first, actually. No, the twenty first until January first. So I was in like some little two, one and a half, almost two weeks. And this was the first year in a very long time where I was able to go home and completely relax for a week and a half, and not have to rush back to Atlanta on the next thing smoking on December twenty sixth to be in the salon for work. I truly enjoyed that. You just don't know how well rested I was. Well, while I was home, I saw an ex-boyfriend. This person had been in my life for many, many years, um, up until recently, actually. And we were involved for three years and recently tried to reconcile, but that just didn't work. It's the pandemic. It just didn't work. However, um, he has a son who was about seven or eight, and they both came to see me on New Year's Eve 2020. What a way to end the year, right? (laughs) Out of all the things going on, boom, my last day of 2020, I am faced with my past and my past's child. Like, wow. So it made me spiral. Internally, I was freaking out. But on the outside, I looked unbothered. And it, it threw him off because he thought something was wrong with me. So it did make me spiral because the life that I planned, the life that I thought I wanted, largely included him. Because I wanted to be married to him. I wanted to have his children. I, you know, when we were younger, we were together. We were high school sweethearts. And uh, we went into college and decided that this wasn't going to work. But years later, uh, here we are. Um, And you were trying to reconcile, but it just didn't work. Because we were just two different people at the time. You know, I, I still held on to this glimmer of hope that maybe he was the one and maybe he was, you know, maybe he should have been. But after he left, which was very, very brief, it was a brief encounter. He spoke to my mom, gave her a hug, and I was still standing there and just in disbelief looking at this man and who was the love of my life for years and now his son who was not my child. And all of that, all of my years came back to me. You know, my late my late teens, early 20s, mid 20s, up to 29, came back playing. And I'm not angry. I'm not upset. I think I've processed that encounter for what it was. 
but I'm here to share this message with you because as I'm speaking, it's flowing through me. My message for you is to let the past go. Let the past be the past. It has nothing to new. It has nothing new to say to you and it has no business meddling in your future. All right, so let's talk about some nails. I know we have had quite a break and I am so interested to know how you all have been holding up during this pandemic. Um, I'm originally from Buffalo, New York, and I know when I visited, New York was back in the orange zone. So a lot of salons were shut back down. Georgia is still gonna do what it wants to do. I, I rock with it. I'm always a ride or die, but you know, this pandemic, this COVID is real. A lot of younger people are starting to suffer from it because we are out here in these clubs in Georgia and we are just living like we are immune to a certain degree. I think Georgia is immune because yeah, our cases have spiked, but that hasn't forced any clubs to get shut down. Um, we aren't even on curfew yet. So I know Charlotte, uh, North Carolina got back on curfew, but uh, and then New York, same, but Georgia, Eh, green light. <laughs> so I'm always interested. Make sure you are reaching out to me. I'm going to do some shout outs later because on my break um, from recording, I got a lot of love via Instagram and I have not forgotten you. You were getting your shout outs because you all kept me going. Um, I ha went through that point when I was reflecting where if I thought if this was still something I wanted to do and the love I received was confirmation. So thank you so much. I am huge on creating a vision for yourself because if you don't create a vision for yourself, someone else will create a vision and you'll end up working that vision, if you know what I mean. I am a serial entrepreneur and quick to research ways to comfortably exit my nine to five. This has been my mindset since the beginning of my working age of 16. Um, this has always been my mindset because when I was 16, the stock market crashed and my father, who was the main breadwinner, went through a rough patch of finding odd jobs so that, you know, my siblings and I were fed and had health insurance. And it was that moment I decided right then and there, I would help do in everything in my power to create a wealthy family. So 2021 is all about wealth building for me. Part of that includes digging deeper into a few projects that I've planned during my break. I think each spring I'll set out a new project. Last spring, my project was this podcast and this coming spring will be merchandise. That's right. You'll be able to purchase goodies from me and customize goodies for me this coming April. I am so excited because it took months to plan and prepare this soft launch. If you remember, I started an account with Teespring to sell t-shirts. But after receiving a few of the testers, listen, I was displeased and I focused all of my energy on sourcing a better print to order place. And I am always learning and open to suggestions to improve. So please be sure to give me a buzz at nailsbyra at gmail.com or on Instagram at nailsbyra. So what are your goals for 2021? Guess what? If you don't have any, that is perfectly fine too. My goal is to help you change your mind by the end of this show. One thing 2020 has certainly taught me was how to be resourceful. We have all the means to be successful gurus, but we spend a large amount of our time scrolling and watching other gurus, air quotes on purpose, make thousands and sometimes millions in a field that we studied. Why do we do that? And as a nail salon or nail salon professional or salon owner, I'm not throwing shade. I am both acknowledging and accepting and appreciating the hustle and self-taught artists, but I am also encouraging the hustle and trained professionals to put some respect on the nail industry's name. Yes, the cosmetics are cool. Yes, it's nice to have a customized set of nails and sometimes people don't care what you're putting on them, but a decent percentage of our job is cosmetics, but we also have to keep in mind that we need to know the chemistry behind certain mixtures, dry times, and how it may affect people with certain ailments. So again, I'm not knocking any of my self-taught 
pardon me, <laughs> any of my self-taught artists. Um, I can't talk today. I'm just trying to encourage my, pr my licensed professionals to look into the tools that we already have. So what I mean by that, the tools that we already have are Instagram. If you have an Instagram, if you found my podcast, you know that I work my Instagram, I work my blog, all of these things are linked together. And if you have questions, um, you may feel free to pause and listen to this episode later. What I use to help run my background as far as when I post to YouTube, it will automatically generate a blog post for me. I use a tool called If This than that. I don't know if I shared this with you before in previous episodes, but here's another gem. It is called If This Then That. What it is, it is a, pardon me if I don't use the correct terminology, but what will happen is it creates widgets for you that will automatically post your, in, your content the same across all of your um, social media platforms. So again, all I have to do is press uh, submit to one place and it'll generate on all. So what will happen if I create a YouTube post, it'll automatically create a blog post for me on my blog and send out a quick tweet that I posted new content. And all I'm doing is posting it to one place and it goes everywhere. You know, it's, it's less time consuming than posting it to my YouTube, logging out my YouTube, then remembering what tweet I want to say, remembering what episode it is, remembering what this thing said, and then trying to make it cute. It's just a lot. So we have all these tools already. Use them to make a quick profit. So have you decided what your goals are yet? Yes? Wonderful. No? Eh, that's still okay. My mission is still to change your mind, by the end of this episode, and if not by the end of this episode, certainly by the end of this season, because I'm telling you, 2020 was the warm up for what 2021 is getting ready to bring us. So I pray that you have decided on what it is that you want to do to help generate more wealth for you and yours, and also remain a skilled professional nail technician. I'm going to touch on that later too. Now that I think about it, my license is coming up for renewal. It expires very soon. And although I am not practicing in a salon right now, I want to stay on top of that. So we'll talk about that later after the break. I know this is the break right now, but I really need you to do me a favor. Go to my YouTube channel and subscribe. It is Nails by Ra. I'll include it in the description box for this episode, but do me a huge favor. Follow me across all social media and just show some support. Once you do, leave a comment and I'll be sure to comment back and maybe hit you up with some goodies from Confessions of a Nail Tech. All right, back to the show. Before the break, I touched on some tools to use to help you post content without having to do too much physical labor. Uh, the tool I referenced was a website called If This Then That. There, you can customize widgets if they aren't already created to help streamline your social media content. I learned about this in undergrad, and I promise you, it still works. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or want to collab. That's always fun. Good people, are you writing down your goals for 2021? Listen, I want to share a quick story because sometimes when we write down our goals and do small things to reach those goals every day, things just happen in our favor. Uh, one of my very good friends was an intern at a company and did some volunteer work after the internship was over and was literally handed a full-time position with benefits and pay. I say... The same thing can be done as a beginner nail technician. As my friend told me about this great news, I automatically went into, hmm, how can I share this in, how can I share this in a way that may be tangible to my listeners? And in most states, cosmetology students are allowed to be an apprentice. Yeah. Warning, this nugget is for my beginners, and if you are a seasoned salon owner or seasoned nail tech looking for an apprentice, here you go. But if not, feel free to skip over this um, if it doesn't apply to you, but these next couple of minutes is for my newbies. 
clear the room. All right. If you want to become a nail technician, but you do not want to go to school, you must do an apprenticeship to become a licensed nail tech. And you still have to sit for the state board. There's no way around that. The apprenticeship hours, they do vary by state and they are non-transferable, unfortunately. So if you are an apprentice in one state, you have to start all over if you move to another state. So for example, in the state of Georgia, apprenticeship, um, apprentices are required, I don't know if I said that right, but hey. Um, if you are an apprentice, you are required to complete a minimum of eight months and 1,050 hours. And you are now required to sit for the theory exam um, as well to become a licensed nail technician. Um, in the state of New York, I think it's a route, oh, I want to say it's about the same, but the apprenticeship hours typically are far greater than those of the ones who actually go to school. And that's just because the apprenticeship hours, it goes into um, literally teaching you how to do nails. Some of them do focus on theory and then also being in practice. So actually being grandfathered into the salon system and actually working. So you're learning and working at the same time, which I think, now that I think about it and say it out loud, I personally probably would have preferred the apprenticeship because let me be honest, going to school truly did teach you to pass the state board exam. That's all it did. It didn't teach you how to deal with the upset client. It didn't teach you how to actually deal with a cut. It didn't teach you how to physically deal with a cut or damaged or soiled um, utensils. It only told you what to do. And I'm more of a visual learner. I have to do it and put it in action when you're telling me how to do it. So um, if you want to check out the apprenticeship, you can learn more on this uh, Georgia State Board of Cosmetology website. And just kind of look around on the website and see what best suits your needs. Um, I recently had someone reach out to me about the state board for the state of Kentucky. And I was so crushed because I couldn't offer more assistance. And it, it bothered me because, A, that's not my area of expertise as far as Kentucky State Board regulations. And then B, this professional circumstances was unique due to a language barrier. I realized then in there that this podcast does reach non-English speakers. And I advised my fellow professional to contact the state board with an interpreter to request a copy of the exam in their respective language. Now, in New York State, it is a little different because you do have the option to, once you register, um, you send your uh, paperwork to Albany to then learn what your testing date is. You have to let them know that your native language is not English so that you are allowed to take the exam in your native language. Now, in the southern states, I'm not too sure if that is still if that is a thing. Um, I, I don't necessarily know how to uh, further investigate that and then effectively effectively say it back to um, said individual. But I did let them know, you know, reach out to them with an interpreter just to see if you could get um, a copy of the exam in your native language. But Kentucky has something interesting, too. They have something else. And pardon me, I have to reference it a little later, but they have a, a, a certain exam that is, it's if you're transferring from another state to Kentucky. It's not how Georgia is where you just send off the paperwork and here you are, you're licensed, but they also make you take another exam if you're a licensed nail technician from another, another state moving to Kentucky, which I thought was pretty strange. But that's a topic for later. That's another episode. But I felt the need to share because there are always ways to become a licensed nail technician. You just have to work with the resources that are available to you. Now, I know that was a lot. Be calm, be brave. But if the goal for you for this year is to first become a licensed nail technician, there are ways. And if you want to open up your shop to an apprentice, you can only have one per year and keep their records on file for up to five years once the apprentice has completed their license. For more information, please visit your respective state's State Board of Cosmetology website. Listen, I share because I care. Seasoned professionals, are you still with me? Hello, hi. <laughs> this one is for you. Have you heard of the Paycheck Protection Program? Uh-huh. There's more funding for us, and make sure you go take advantage, especially if you lost wages during the pandemic due to salon closures. 
I haven't had a chance to dig deep and look into the guidelines, but the assistance is there should you need it. In addition, look, I know it may be tough to focus on other goals while trying to stay afloat, but please don't give up. This is your message to not give up. I think what we're doing is readjusting to the new normal, as I call it. So remember before I was, you know, talking to the newbies about apprenticeships, now would be a wonderful time to look for an apprentice. And at one of the salons I worked at, um, the owner was charging the apprentice to be her apprentice. I'm not exactly sure how that's supposed to work, but there's an idea. You know, if you're gonna pay for go to school, you might be able to pay to become someone's apprentice. Just a thought. I'm not exactly sure how that works because the apprentice is supposed to be learning, but we'll get into that later. But if that is something that you're comfortable with and your apprentice is willing to pay you, go for it. That's another source of income for you. And you get an employee on top of it. So also, I have seen more tutorials pop up now than ever and even quick snippets on TikTok. You know, I had a TikTok at the beginning of the pandemic and it never dawned on me to upload snippets of my tutorials to TikTok until I saw someone else doing it. It's not a missed opportunity, believe me. The same thing goes for creating press-on nails. I was watching a tutorial on YouTube by uh, Simply Michelle's Glam Station. She's awesome, by the way. And she seriously gave some gems towards starting your own press-on business. I'm inclined to start one as well. And she said something that really stuck with me. She said, most of the nail techs who are started or who have started the press on nails orders they've maxed out and some of them are no longer taking orders so there's always room for you so whatever idea you've been sitting on that you think is oversaturated trust me it isn't do it anyway so have you written down your goals yet because we're going to talk about them later Before I go, I know I need to do my shout outs because you guys just don't know how inspirational it is to hear from you and how touching it is to hear from you to know that my little bit of advice is going a long way for a lot of you. I'm so overjoyed because when I'm going through my little doubts where I'm like, eh, I don't know if I should do an episode, I get an Instagram message and I'm like, all right, you guys hear me. I see you. <laughs> so I want to give a shout out to at Nails by Michaela N, at Keely underscore DC, at Moi Canvas, all the way from the UK. Hello. At Candy Corner 716, Buffalo in the house, at My underscore Sassy, and at Y Normal underscore Nails. Now, why normal underscore nails is a future nail technician and i am so excited because i love hearing from future nail technicians that was the goal of my podcast specifically to reach future nail technicians inspire current ones and get some nuggets and jewels from seasoned nail technicians but i love to hear from you so please keep reaching out um also at chastine i'm so sorry if i pronounced your name wrong but chaz Thank you for the shout out. Thank you for reaching out to me. And also, last but not least, at Nailed Me. I actually met Nailed Me at the supply store here in Georgia. And what made me interact was how long her nails were. And I just, I was like, wow, I want to learn how to do that. Can you teach me? <laughs> so shout out to at Nailed Me. And that's Nailed M-E-E, -E, two E's. Thank you all for checking me out and still supporting Nails by Ra and the confession of a nails, nail tech. Thank you. I know we covered a lot today, but no fear, I'm here to give you a quick recap. This is a new year, new you, new goals. Be sure that you are writing down your goals and doing small things toward your goal every day. It will make a world of difference six months from now. Newbies, uh-huh, now's your chance. Find an apprenticeship or certainly enroll in nail tech school. That's your key. Seasoned professionals, seriously look into the Paycheck Protection Program and 
look into ways to increase revenue just in case salons become closed again at some point. All right, until next time. Thank you for tuning in to the Confessions of a Nail Tech podcast. I've been your host, Rashida H. Muhammad, nail tech affectionately known as Ra. Make sure you tune in next week, Tuesday, for our next episode. Looking forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, subscribe to the Confessions of a Nail Tech podcast and make sure you stay in the loop by following me across the board on social media at Nails by Ra. Also visit me at www.nailsbyra.com. Until next time.